Lecture 36. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Virtual Universities course on Business and Technical Communication. In the previous lecture, we were looking at paragraphs and reviewing how we could improve our writing by improving our paragraphs. In this lecture, we will continue reviewing the language and look at sentences. We will look at how to improve sentences and what the commonly found problems in sentences are, which include the use of stacked modifiers and nouns. We will also look at wordiness, which is caused by the incorrect use of passive voice or active voice. Uh, wordiness is also caused by nominalization, unnecessary repetition, and the use of unnecessary words and phrases. We will then look at overloaded sentences and how you can correct those, and segment fra uh, sentence fragments and what to do so that your writing does not have fragmented sentences. We will also look at problems with the use of comma splice fused sentences and stringy sentences and we look at agreement between subjects and verbs. Uh, we look at uh, using two or more nouns uh, for w and how to use a pronoun with that. We look at sentences beginning with there. Uh, we look at indefinite pronouns, collective nouns and quantifiers and how all of, the, uh, all of these if used incorrectly can cause problems. We will also look at pronoun antecedent agreement and how to may use that correctly so that our writing does not have commonly found problems. Let us have a look at stacked modifiers and nouns. What do we mean when we talk of modifiers and uh, stacked modifiers and how they can cause problems in our sentences? You need to avoid using long strings of modifiers or nouns. When we talk of modifiers, we mean those words which are added to nouns to add meaning to them. Uh, these stacked modifiers, if you are stacking more than one uh, modifier to a noun or to a word to uh, add meaning to it, they can be hard to read and sometimes they lead to ambiguity. Padne wale ko ye clear nahi rehta ki kis cheez ke baare mein baat ho rahi hai, ambiguous ho jati hai baat. Um, if you need to add words, then add just a few words to make the relationships between nouns clear to the readers. Agar aapne apne alfaz ke saath modifiers istemal ki hain, to koshish karein ki aur koi alfaz bhi saath mein aap istemal kar lein, prepositions ya conjunctions, taake aapki jo relationship hai nouns ki aapas mein, wo clear ho jai. Kuch examples dekhenge, usse ye baat aapko mazid vaze ho jayegi. Uh, a weak version of a sentence that we are going to look at is, Previous work has shown that a purified pro-oxidant vitamin E deficient fish oil diet protects mice against malaria parasites. Ab isme ye clear nahi ho raha ki kya cheez hai jo mice ko malaria parasites se protect karti hai. A purified pro-oxidant hai, vitamin E hai, fish oil hai ya in sab ka mila ke kuch hai, kuch in saari cheezon ki relationship aapas mein clear nahi ho rahi. The improved version would be something like, previous work has shown that feeding a pro-oxidant diet containing fish oil but devoid of vitamin E protects mice against malaria parasites. Now you can see that as the weak version is in it and the improved version is also talking about that a purified fish oil diet protects mice against malaria parasites. And the rest of the information is modifiers. Pro-oxidant, vitamin E deficient, modifiers. But their relationship is not clear that what is the relationship between their fish oil and what is the relationship between their sentence and meaning. In the improved version, we have said that the pro-oxidant diet containing fish oil but devoid of vitamin E. We have cleared these things and cleared them. We have cleared the modifiers को एक लाइन में लगाने के बजाय एक दूसरे के साथ स्टैक करने के बजाय हमने उनके बीच में कंजंक्शंस प्रेपोजिशंस दिए ताकि उनका आपस में रिलेशनशिप और उनका मेन नाउन जो है फिश ऑयल उसके साथ रिलेशनशिप क्लियर हो जाए अनदर एग्जांपल ऑफ सच स्टैक्ड मॉडिफायर्स इज वी हैव एनालाइज्ड लो एनर्जी इंटरप्लानेटरी चार्ज्ड सन सोर्स्ड पार्टिकल फ्लक्स टाइम सीरीज अब जैसा कि आप देख रहे हैं इस एग्जाम्पल में दोबारा से बहुत सारे मॉडिफायर्स हैं जो एक दूसरे के साथ 
स्टैक किए गए हैं जो एक दूसरे के फौरन बाद आते हैं उनका बीच में आपस में कोई रिलेशनशिप नहीं है लो एनर्जी इंटरप्लानिटरी चार्ज सन सोर्स पार्टिकल फ्लक्स टाइम सीरीज कुछ समझ नहीं आ रही कि मॉडिफायर्स कौन से हैं और नाउन कौन सा है कि ये किस चीज़ के बारे में बात की जा रही है मेन ऑब्जेक्ट क्या है इसी की इम्प्रूव वर्जन देखते हैं वी हैव एनालाइज द टाइम सीरीज ऑफ फ्लक्सेज ऑफ लो एनर्जी इंटरप्लानिटरी चार्ज पार्टिकल हुज अल्टीमेट ओरिजिन इज द सन ना एज यू कैन सी दिस बिकम्स मच मोर क्लियर इंस्टेड ऑफ सेंग सन सोर्सड वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द टाइम सीरीज ऑफ फ्लक्सेज ऑफ लो एनर्जी इंटरप्लानिटरी चार्ज पार्टिकल्स एंड देन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट देयर ओरिजिन वी आर सेंग दैट देयर ओरिजिन इज द सन इंस्टेड ऑफ सेंग सन सोर्सड so it becomes much more clear as to what is being talked about another similar example of stacked modifiers is the system uses a high peak power single frequency low divergent light beam produced by pulsed lasers ab jaise ki aap dekhe is example mein bhi clear nahi hai ki kis cheez ki baat ho rahi hai the modification of beam is difficult to sort out we are talking about a beam we are saying this is basically you saying the system uses a beam and then all the other information is what type of beam but it's not very clear uh, a clearer version would be the system uses pulsed lasers that operate under high peak power to produce a single frequency light beam with low divergence now introducing these uh, prepositions like with introducing words like that saying to produce etc uh, Mm, add more meaning to the sentence and they actually show the connections between the modifiers and the noun ye to baat hui stacked modifiers ki or nouns nouns ki now let's have a look at wordiness what do we mean when we talk of wordiness basically you should say what you have to say in as few words as possible without sacrificing clarity or omitting vital information whatever it is you have to say try to use the minimum amount of words but make sure that the meaning comes across properly main ye nahi kahungi aapko ki aap kam alfaz istemal karne ke liye jo aapka sentence hai uska meaning change kar dein ya uska ya itne kam alfaz istemal is tarah karein ki baat puri tarah se wazeh na ho sake lekin ek expert writer wohi hai jo minimum words mein maximum information convey kar sake without confusing the reader as well conciseness is desirable in all writing but especially so in technical writing because we've talked as we've talked about earlier uh, when you're writing to for uh, a technical purpose or for business your readers will not have time to uh, sp- spend so much time on f- trying to figure out what you're saying they want everything concisely they want everything Uh, that is uh, things that they can digest within a glance they are not reading for leisure so they will not want to waste a lot of time in trying to figure out what you are saying excessive use of the passive voice excessive nominalization unnecessary repetition and unnecessary words and phrases are some common causes of wordy writing and we are going to have a look at these in a minute now you need to decide when to use the passive voice and when to use the active voice you will use the active voice whenever the passive voice is not appropriate active verbs make for concise prose sentences with passive verbs use more uh, more words so when you are aiming for conciseness try to go for the active voice because if you are using the passive voice you will need to use more words moreover passive verbs deemphasize or even eliminate mention of the performer of the action that is conveyed by the verb every uh, verb is performing and is conveying an action and every action is obviously performed by somebody jo bhi ek action aap dikha rahe hain apne sentence mein wo koi na koi to perform kar raha hai lekin passive voice mein जो परफॉर्मर होता है एक्शन का उसका जिक्र नहीं आता जबकि एक्टिव वॉइस में तो आप क्लियरली बताते हैं कि कौन क्या काम कर रहा है लेट्स हैव अ लुक एट एन एग्जांपल विच विल क्लैरिफाई दिस फॉर यू 
uh, a weak version of a sentence would be in this project three psych psychological experiments were performed by the authors so that the technical problems for the oralization of a sound field could be clarified. An improved version is in this project the authors performed three psychological experiments to clarify the technical problems for the oralization of a sound field. Now, we will see that the second part, the improved version, is that you active voice. Ki. You are saying clearly the authors performed to clarify. The verbs are in active voice. Whereas in the earlier one, the verbs were in the passive voice. You are saying the experiments were performed so that uh, the oralization of a sound field could be clarified. So, this way, you are automatically alfaz zyada istemal ho raha hai, sentence lamba ho raha hai, aur clarity uski wajah se kam ho raha hai. Where possible, use verb forms instead of noun forms. Isko hum, uh, jahan hum, jab hum uh, ek verb ko noun mein tabdeel karke, aur usko uh, noun form uski bana dete hai, usko nominalization kaha jata hai. An excessive or unnecessary nominalization turning verbs into nouns can make your writing wordy because it requires a noun and a verb instead of just the verb. When you do nominalization, you will make a verb ko noun, then you need to add a noun in your sentence. When you have a verb in nominalization, you can use a noun in your sentence. Let's have a look at some examples which will clarify this point further. A weak version with nominalization is a winglet may cause the introduction of a discontinuity in the lift distribution curve. Ab yaan, the introduction of jo hai, wo, uh, humne nominalization kar di aur teen alfaz istemal kiye. Uh, an improved version would be a winglet may introduce a discontinuity in the lift distribution curve. Yehi cheez humne jab verb ko directly bola. So, a winglet may introduce bus ek clubs ke saati humne jo humne uh, baat teen char alfaz me kehti cause the introduction of wo humne ek clubs me kehti. Isi tarah regeneration of the resin bed is achieved by a calcium chloride solution. Now, note that the main action of the sentence is located in the nominal subject, whereas the uh, improved version would be the resin bed is regenerated with a calcium chloride solution. Here, the main action of the verb of the of the sentence is now in the verb re, is regenerated. Jabke pehle mein humne regeneration jo tha, usko hum wo humne nominal nominalize kar diya tha. Regenerated ko humne noun banake aur regeneration ke taur pe istemal kiya tha. To zara sa jo meaning tha, wo itna clear nahi tha. Or ab the resin bed is regenerated, clear ho gaya, verb form is tamal ho raha to is liye padhne wale ke liye asani hai. Also try to avoid unnecessary repetition. One of the most common types of unnecessary repetition involves modifiers that repeat information given in the word modify. Kai baar yeh hota hai ke joh hum labs is tamal kar rahe hote hain, us mein information puri hoti hai jo hamare reader ko chahiye lekin hum uske saath modifier laga dete hain jo ke unnecessary hota hai uski zarurat nahi hoti kyunki wo wohi information de raha hota hai jo main uh, loves ke andar hai jisko hum modify kar rahe hain in the uh, on your screen now we will discuss a few show you a few examples and discuss some examples of recognizing and eliminating rec uh, repetition let's have a look at this first example where uh, the writer says currently aircraft must be kept a minimum of at least three miles apart in the horizontal plane. Ab dekhiye ki isme kya cheez hai jo repeat ho rahi hai. Minimum of at least three miles. Jab aapne minimum keh diya to aapko at least ki zarurat nahi hai. Ya aapne at least keh diya to aapko minimum ki zarurat nahi hai. Ye dono cheeze ek hi meaning de rahi hai. The improved version would be Currently, aircraft must be kept a minimum of three miles apart in the uh, three miles apart in the horizontal plane. So here, by uh, by taking out of at least, we are making the sentence more concise and much more effective. Another weak uh, example would be in 1928, 
Alexander Fleming discovered for the first time that penicillin uh, mold could kill Staphylococcus bacteria in petri dishes. Fleming named the lethal antibacterial chemical secreted in the by the deadly penicillin mold, dubbing it penicillin. Now, there is a lot of repetition and we were going to see how this can be improved. I would like you to look at the sentence first to see if you can figure out the areas which are being repeated. Now, let us quickly have a look at the improved version. In 1928, Alexander Fleming discovered that penicillin mold could kill Staphylococcus bacteria in petri dishes. He dubbed the lethal antibacterial chemical secreted by the mold penicillin. Ab zahir hai jab dubbed kar diya, le, kaha humne that he dubbed it, that means that he named it. So, that the uh, saying uh, as in the previous sentence, Fleming named the lethal antibacterial and then the, we said dubbing it penicillin is repetition. Similarly, in the first uh, part of the sentence, uh, in 1928 Alexander Fleming discovered that penicillin could do this. We do not need to say discovered for the first time, because when there is a discovery, it is the first time. Hai. Uske baad agar koi cheez, uh, koi dekhe, to us cheez ko dobara dekhe, to wo for the first time nahi hoti hai, wo discovery nahi hoti. So, by saying discovery, you are the uh, verb discovered shows that it was something that was looked at for the first time. So, you do not need to say for the first time. Similarly, uh, another sentence would be ability to separate from water is an essential prerequisite for a hydraulic oil to be used in plant systems where contamination of the hydraulic system by water is likely to form sludge emulsions of oil and water. Now, there is so much repetition of phrases and terms in the sentence that it is not clear what the writer wants to say. A better version would be simply saying plants with hydraulic systems routinely exposed to water should use hydraulic oils that are immiscible with water. Now, the same, it has the same meaning, it is much more concise, it is much more easier, it is much easier for the uh, reader to pick out the meaning. Unnecessary words and phrases also make your um, sentences much longer, much wordier, much more difficult to understand. You need to make sure that each word and phrase in your sentence contributes to meaning and clarity. If there are any words, if there are any phrases in your sentence that are redundant, look out for them. Agar aapko lag, aap apne sentences ko dekhiye, agar aapko lage ke in, aapke sentences mein koi is tarah ke alfaz hai, jinko aap nikal bhi dein, to aapke sentence ka me, uh, meaning jo hai, wo change nahi hoga, to phir un alfaz ko nikal dein, kyunke wo redundant hai. Try to avoid the commonly used constructions of there is or there are and it is. There is, there are or it is istamal karna apne sentences mein uh, jo hai usse aapke sentences confusing hote hain, unki clarity kam hoti hai. To isliye koshish ki jai ke inko na istamal kiya jai, jo bhi baat kahen hai, wo directly kahen. Abhi jab hum examples dekhen hai, to ye baat aapke liye aur vaze hogi. Instead of saying, it is expected that by the year 2000, the Library of Congress will have digitized 5 million books and images. It would be better to say, by the year 2000, the Library of Congress expects to have digitized 5 million books and images. Ab dekhe, it is expected ke bajai, aapne, uh, Library of Congress expects kya diya, ek loves istamal hua, jahaan aap teen kar rahe the, aur jo aapka sentence hai, wo zyada concise ho gaya. Similarly, another weak sentence would be, there is an electronic Beulof project at the British Library that is preserving the original manuscript of the 11th century Anglo-Saxon epic. This is improved version. Hai. An electronic uh, Beowulf uh, project at the British Library is preserving the original manuscript of the 11th century Anglo-Saxon epic. In this sentence, we have there is bhi hata diya or that is preserving ke bajai, khali is preserving. Laga ke sentence ko humne behtar kar diya. Similarly, let us have a look at another example where a question is being asked. Are the detection systems and secondary containments periodically performance testable to verify operability in the event that they are called upon to function? Ab is question se kuch samaj nahi aarai ke 
जो ऑथर हैं वो क्या पूछ रहे हैं वॉट द मेन क्वेश्चन इज लेट्स हैव अ लुक एट द इम्प्रूव वर्जन ऑफ द सेम क्वेश्चन टू सी हाउ द क्वेश्चन बिकम्स क्लियर कैन द डिटेक्शन सिस्टम एंड सेकेंडरी कंटेनमेंट बी परफॉर्मेंस टेस्टेड पीरियडिकली सिंपल सी बात है कैन दीज सिस्टम्स एंड सेकेंडरी कंटेनमेंट बी परफॉर्मेंस टेस्टेड पीरियडिकली ओवर ओवर डिफरेंट पीरियड्स जबकि यही बात पहले सेंटेंस में इतनी लंबे तरीके से कही गई थी क्योंकि जो आइडियाज थे वो रिपीट बहुत हो रहे थे ऑल्सो अवॉइड ओवरलोडेड सेंटेंसेज अवॉइड सेंटेंसेज दैट कंटेन मोर इंफॉर्मेशन देन द रीडर कैन ईजिली फॉलो अगर एक सेंटेंस में बहुत ज़्यादा इंफॉर्मेशन होगी तो वो पढ़ने वाले को उसको डाइजेस्ट करने का टाइम नहीं मिलेगा उनको समझ नहीं आएगी कि आप क्या कह रहे हैं तो इसलिए कोशिश करें कि आपका जो एक सेंटेंस हो उसमें उतनी ही इंफॉर्मेशन हो जो पढ़ने वाले एब्जॉर्ब कर सकें डिवाइड योर सेंटेंसेस इफ योर सेंटेंसेस आर लॉन्ग देन डिवाइड देम इनटू मोर मैनेजेबल पीसेस दैट कैन बी इजीली ग्रास्प्ड डोंट ट्राई टू क्रैम ऑल योर इंफॉर्मेशन इन वन सेंटेंस इट्स परफेक्टली ऑल टू ब्रेक डाउन लॉन्ग सेंटेंसेज इन टू शॉर्टर वंस एंड ऑल्सो to give variety to your sentences as well we've talked about different types of sentences earlier and uh, we've talked about how seven different ways of writing sentences can uh, uh, combine can be can be used to make 46 different types of sentences if you combine the basic seven types so try to give variety don't try to just have very long sentences or don't fall in the, into the trap of having very very short sentences very simple sentences give give your sentences some variety to and make them manageable let's have a look at a weak a sentence where there is too much information the uh, the sentence is overloaded because researchers interested in speech synthesis and automatic recognition need to find rules that improve intelligibility of speech they need to study the psychological determinants more closely than before they can solve what has become a complex set of questions अब कुछ इसमें समझ नहीं आई कि लिखने वाले ने क्या कहा है क्योंकि इतनी इन्फॉर्मेशन दी गई है कि रिसर्चर्स को क्या करना है वो किस चीज़ में इंटरेस्टेड हैं कि आपको शायद दो तीन बार आप पढ़ेंगे तो फिर आपको इसका मेन पॉइंट समझ आएगा लेट्स हैव अ लुक एट द इम्प्रूव वर्जन रिसर्चर्स इंटरेस्टेड इन स्पीच सिंथिस एंड ऑटोमेटिक रिकग्निशन नीड्स टू फाइंड रूल्स दैट इम्प्रूव इंटेलिजिबिलिटी ऑफ स्पीच यहाँ एक सेंटेंस खत्म हो गया पता चल गया कि रिसर्चर्स जो हैं जो इस चीज में इंटरेस्ट हैं उनको क्या करना चाहिए एंड देन द नेक्स्ट सेंटेंस स्टार्ट्स बाय सेइंग कॉन्सिक्वेंटली दे नीड्स टू स्टडी द साइकोलॉजिकल डिटर्मिनेंट्स मोर क्लोजली बिफोर दे कैन सॉल्व व्हाट हैज बिकम अ कॉम्प्लेक्स सेट ऑफ क्वेश्चन अब आप देखें कि इन दोनों सेंटेंसेज में इन दोनों एग्जाम्पल्स uh, में बहुत फर्क नहीं है जो पहला था वो एक ही लंबा सेंटेंस था जो दूसरा था वो सिर्फ उस एक सेंटेंस को दो सेंटेंसेस में डिवाइड कर दिया गया और कॉन्सिक्वेंटली का लफ्ज ऐड कर दिया गया टू शो द कनेक्शन टू शो दैट इट इज समथिंग दैट विल हैपन आफ्टर एज एज अ कॉन्सिक्वेंस ऑफ व्हाट हैपन बिफोर एंड इट जस्ट मेक्स द रिलेशनशिप्स मच क्लियर इट मेक्स इट ईजियर फॉर यू टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट द राइटर इज से एग्जाम्पल वुड बी In response to the leak history of the pipe made of three or four L stainless steel, a work request IJ117 was prepared by Plant Maintenance in August of 1989. To took place approximately 55 of the HLD 304L pipe, the entire segment running from the cells area to the point in the drainage system that turns south to exit the building, with pipe made of a different material, Iconel 600. In brackets, see figure N. Now. अ कम्प्लीटली इनकम्प्रहेंसिबल सेंटेंस कुछ नहीं समझ आ रही कि ये क्या कहना चाह रहे हैं क्या बात हो रही है बस ये पता चल रहा है कि कुछ पाइप्स का जिक्र है बहुत सारे उनके नंबर्स हैं कुछ लेंथ्स की बात हो रही है लेकिन मीनिंग जो है वो समझ नहीं आ रही ना लेट्स हैव अ लुक एट द इम्प्रूव वर्जन प्लांट मेंटेनेंस रिस्पॉन्डेड टू द लीक हिस्ट्री ऑफ द स्टेनलेस स्टील पाइप ब्रैकेट्स में उनने पाइप का नाम नंबर दिया है थ्री ओ फोर एल विद वर्क रिक्वेस्ट इन ऑगस्ट नाइनटीन टू रिप्लेस अ 55 फुट सेक्शन विद आइकोनल 600 पाइप फुल स्टॉप नेक्स्ट सेंटेंस स्टार्ट्स विद दिस सेक्शन मेड अप ऑफ द इंटायर पाइप सेगमेंट रनिंग फ्रॉम द सेल्स एरिया टू अ पॉइंट विद ड्रेनेज सिस्टम टर्न साउथ टू एग्जिट द बिल्डिंग 
c figure n. Now, this uh, makes the meaning much clearer. It is the, the whole uh, long sentence is divided into two, se uh, two sentences. The references to the pipe uh, numbers are given in brackets rather than as part of the whole sentence and it becomes much more uh, easy for the re uh, reader to comprehend what the writer is saying. Another common problem with sentences is the use of sentence fragments. A sentence fragment is missing a subject, a verb or both, but it is punctuated as if there were a complete sentence. A sentence fragment wo hai jisme ya subject missing hai ya verb missing hai ya shayad kabhi kabhi dono missing hai lekin uski punctuation is tarah hai jaise ki wo complete sentence ho. Jaise ki hum pichle lecture mein bhi baat kar chuke hain ek complete sentence wo hota hai jisme ek subject ho ek verb ho. Beshak wo do alfaz ka sentence ho. For example, Ben eats ya Ben sleeps ya Ben is sleeping. Usme subject bhi hai verb bhi hai. अगर कोई सेंटेंस है जिसमें सब्जेक्ट नहीं है या वर्ब नहीं है तो वो सेंटेंस एक कंप्लीट सेंटेंस नहीं है वो फ्रैगमेंट होगा सो इफ देर इज अ मिसिंग वर्ब और अ मिसिंग नाउन और बोथ देन द सेंटेंस इज नॉट कंप्लीट स्पेशली इफ इट इज पंक्चुएटेड एज इफ इट वर अ कंप्लीट सेंटेंस देन यू नीड टू लुक आउट फॉर इट वी आर गोइंग टू हैव अ लुक एट सम एग्जाम्पल्स where we will see such sentences which do not make sense and and we will also correct them. It is unacceptable to say by virtue of their prevalence alone, full stop. And then the next sentence being, it is clear that mood disorders do not necessarily breed genius. Now the part by virtue of their prevalence alone, which is um, uh, made to look like a sentence because it has a full stop. It contains neither a subject nor a verb. You do not know what is being talked about and there is no action being performed either. So, it is clear that it is not a sentence even though it looks like a sentence because it starts with a capital letter and ends with a full stop. An improved version would be uh, that you repair the sentence fragment by adding the missing element either the subject or the verb or both or you can merge the fragment with a clause that does contain a subject and a verb. Ya to aap isi sentence, isi fragment ko improve karke a complete sentence banai, isme sub, uh, subject ya verb add kare ya ab isko kisi aise sentence ka hissa bana de jo ke complete sentence ho. For example, jaise agla sentence hai. Let us have a look at the improved versions by saying by virtue of the prevalence alone comma it is clear that mood disorders do not necessarily breed genius. Ya humne is fragment ko by virtue of the prevalence alone is fragment ko humne dusre sentence ka hissa bana diya comma laga ke. To phir ye fragment nahi raha ye uh, jo agla sentence tha uska dependent clause ho gaya. इसी तरह अगर आपको फ्रैगमेंट्स मिले अपनी राइटिंग में आपको लगे कि आप जो जिनको आप चीजों को जुमले समझ रहे हैं वो जुमले पूरे नहीं हैं क्योंकि उनमें सब्जेक्ट नहीं है या वर्ब नहीं है लेकिन वो सिर्फ देखने में जुमले लग रहे हैं तो उनको आप डिपेंडेंट क्लॉज बना सकते हैं किसी और सेंटेंस के साथ लिंक कर सकते हैं या फिर उनको आप देखें और उनमें सब्जेक्ट या वर्ब एड करके उनको एक कंप्लीट सेंटेंस बना लें एन अदर कॉमन प्रॉब्लम विथ सेंटेंसेज इज द यूज ऑफ कॉमर स्प्लाइस a comma splice is when two independent clauses are linked with just a comma. Humne pichle lectures mein dekha ki independent clauses kya hote hain aur agar aap do independent clauses ko sirf ek comma ke saath join kare to wo comma splice hota hai. Uh, and th th this is a common error in writing and this needs to be remedied. You can correct a comma splice in four ways. First, uh, the first way of uh, correcting a comma splice is that you separate the independent clauses into two separate sentences and punctuate, punctuate both sentences with a period or a full stop. Basically, this means that if you have two independent clauses and you have got a comma between them, then you need to look out either 
what you can do is you can use those two independent clauses as two separate sentences un dono ke beech mein aap full stop ya period lagaye taaki wo independent sentences bane wo do independent clauses ek dusre ke sath run in na kar rahe ho or you can replace the comma with a semicolon or with a semicolon and a conjunctive adverb such as however or furthermore the conjunctive adverb however furthermore kisam ke jo alfaz hote hain they are normally followed by a comma so ye aap ye pehle to humne baat ki ki aap ye kar sakte hain aapne do independent clauses hain comma se separate kiye hue hain aap wahan comma hata de full stop laga de dusri aap ye cheez kar sakte hain aap comma rehne de aur uske sath ek कंजंक्टिव एडवर्ब लगा दें जिस तरह के हाउ एवर और फिर उसके बाद फिर कॉमा लगा के अगला इंडिपेंडेंट क्लॉज जो है वो आप शुरू करें तीसरा तरीका ये हो सकता है दैट यू विल रिप्लेस द कॉमा विद अ कॉमा एंड अ कोऑर्डिनेटिंग कंजंक्शन आप कॉमा हटाएंगे नहीं उस कॉमा के साथ आप एक कोऑर्डिनेटिंग कंजंक्शन और लगा देंगे और फिर अगला क्लॉज शुरू करेंगे फॉर एग्जांपल कॉमा लगा के आप एंड लगा देंगे और अगला सेंट अगला इंडिपेंडेंट क्लॉज शुरू कर देंगे और एन अदर वे ऑफ रेमेडिंग इट कुड बी दैट यू विल मेक वन ऑफ द क्लॉजेज इन टू अबॉर्डिनेट क्लॉज और अ डिपेंडेंट क्लॉज जैसे कि हमने पहले फ्रेगमेंट्स में भी देखा कि एक हमने जो था क्लॉज उसको हमने डिपेंडेंट क्लॉज कर दिया इसी तरह आप दो इंडिपेंडेंट क्लॉजेस को साथ नहीं रख सकते कॉमे के साथ आप एक क्लॉज को इंडिपेंडेंट करें और एक को डिपेंडेंट क्लॉज कर दें फिर आप कॉमा लगा के उनको ज्वाइन कर सकते हैं लेट्स हैव अ लुक एट सम एग्जांपल्स विच विल क्लैरिफाई दीज पॉइंट्स एन अनएक्सेप्टेबल पेयर ऑफ इंडिपेंडेंट क्लॉजेज वुड बी इन नाइनटीन थर्टी वन ओपन टू फाइंड एन इक्वेजन फॉर द फोटोन दैट वुड बी एन एनोलॉग to dirac's equation for the electron comma he failed in this effort ab jaise ki aap dekhe dono jo parts hain sentences ke wo apni apni jagah independent clauses hain in 1931 oppenheimer attempted to find an equation to the photon that will be an analog to uh, dirac's equation for the electron this in itself is an independent clause and then the second independent clause is he failed in this effort ab sirf inme comma ke sath inko आपने हमने सेपरेट uh, किया हुआ है दिस इज इनकरेक्ट दिस इज अ कॉमा स्प्लाइस द एक्सेप्टेबल वर्जन वुड बी दैट इंस्टेड ऑफ द कॉमा वी पुट इधर वी पुट अ फुल स्टॉप और अ पीरियड एंड स्टार्ट द नेक्स्ट इंडिपेंडेंट क्लॉज विद द कैपिटल लेटर दोनों को अलग अलग सेंटेंसेस बना दें वर्ड्स हमने कोई नहीं चेंज किए ना हमने कोई अल्फाज इसमें एड किए हैं सिर्फ कॉमा की जगह फुल स्टॉप लगाया है और फिर क्योंकि जाहिर है अगला जो लिखा फुल स्टॉप के बाद हमेशा कैपिटल लेटर आता है इसलिए ही का एच हमने कैपिटल कर दिया अनदर वे ऑफ इम्प्रूविंग दिस वुड बी सिंपली दैट यू पुट आफ्टर से आफ्टर इलेक्ट्रॉन आफ्टर द फर्स्ट इंडिपेंडेंट क्लॉज यू पुट अ सेमिकोलन इन नाइनटीन थर्टी वन ओपन हाई टू फाइन एन इक्वेजन फॉर द फोटोन दैट वुड बी एन एनोलॉग टू डायरेक्ट इक्वेजन फॉर द इलेक्ट्रॉन semicolon then he failed in this effort full stop phir aapne capital nahi kiya h ko kyunki semicolon ke baad jab aap shuru karenge to aap capital letter nahi lagayenge uh, lekin aapne semicolon se inko do uh, independent clauses ko link kar diya ya aap ye bhi keh sakte hain ki electron ke baad semicolon lagaye aur phir aap however comma he failed in this effort एक कंजंक्टिव एडवर्ब लगा दें उसके बाद फिर कॉमा करके और आगे जो है सेंटेंस को कंप्लीट कर दीजिए एन अदर वर्जन वुड बी इंक्लूड द कॉमा एंड देन विद द कॉमा एड बट एन एनोलॉग टू डायरेक्ट इक्वेजन फॉर द इलेक्ट्रॉन कॉमा बट ही फेल्ड इन दिस एफर्ट इसी को सबॉर्डिनेट क्लॉज भी आप इस तरह कर सकते हैं कि आप जो पहला हिस्सा है उसको सबॉर्डिनेट कर दें ही फेल इन दिस एफर्ट जो है वो आपका मेन इंडिपेंडेंट क्लॉज रहे और जो पहला हिस्सा था वो आपका डिपेंडेंट क्लॉज हो जाए बाय यूजिंग द वर्ड ऑल दो यू कैन से ऑल दो इन नाइनटीन थर्टी वन ओपन अटेम्प्टेड टू फाइंड एन इक्वेजन फॉर द फोटोन दैट वुड बी एन एनोलॉग टू डायरेक्ट इक्वेजन फॉर द इलेक्ट्रॉन कॉमा ही फेल इन दिस एफर्ट ना एन अदर आफ्टर कॉमर्स प्लाइस एन अदर कॉमन प्रॉब्लम इज फ्यूज सेंटेंसेज 
This is similar to comma, slips, comma splice. Basically, this means that two independent clauses run together without a conjunction or punctuation between them. Comma splice mein toh humne dekha ke do independent clauses the unme comma tha jahan jabke kuch aur hona chahiye tha. Fused sentences mein ye hota hai ke do independent clauses honge aur unme koi punctuation nahi hogi, comma bhi nahi hoga. Aur pata hi nahi chalega ke ek idea aur dusra idea, ek idea kahan khatam ho raha hai, dusra idea kahan shuru ho raha hai. So, this is basically when two independent clauses run together without a conjunction or punctuation between them and you should not allow this to happen in your writing at all. This error produces a fused sentence. And to correct fused sentences, you will use the same strategies as we talked about in uh, when we were talking about comma splice. Let us have a look at some examples. It would be unacceptable to say a remote control for a car alarm works better held up, up at arm's length than at waist level but works best when held under the chin. Physicists suggest that the uh, body may be acting as an extension of the antenna. Now in this there are two independent clauses. Pehla jo tha, talking about the remote control held at arm's length than at waist length uh, but works best when held under the chin. Or dusra independent clause hai jaha physicist ki baat ho rahi hai that they suggest that the body may act as an extension of the antenna. But these two independent clauses are fused together as one sentence and there is no punctuation in between to show any kind of link to show any break. The acceptable version would be a remote control for a car alarm works better held up at arm's length than at waist level but it works best when held under the chin semicolon. Physicists suggest that the body may be acting as an extension of the antenna. Se sirf ek semicolon humne include kiya lekin usse sentences mein ke dono jo independent clauses te unke aapas mein break a gai hai aur wo alag alag nazar a rahe hai. Another unacceptable example would be lenticular clouds frequently uh, form one above the other like a stack of pancakes at a distance they may resemble a fleet of hovering spacecraft. Again, as you saw in this uh, uh, fused in these few sentences, there are two independent clauses and they are fused together, they are merged together without any punctuation. Pandne may be bolne may be aapko ye nahi samajati ki aapne pause kahan dena hai, break kahan dena hai, connection kya hai. Ek nazar isko dekhe aur soche ke break kahan aegi. Jaisa ki aap dekh rahe hai, this sentence can simply be uh, made correct by adding a semicolon after pancakes to show the break between the two independent clauses. Another problem is stringy sentences. You need to avoid stringy, uh, stringing several clauses that would be easier to read and understand if they were broken up into separate clauses. Koshish karein ke bahut saare clauses ko aap ek saath string na karein. Kyunki unko alag alag karke agar dekhenge to wo zyada asani se samaj aayenge. The following example make the point of how incoherent the language becomes with the use of stringy sentences. This example shows or this example says we must accept the facts and our enormous energy requirements but it is also important not to forget that attempts to economize on safety provisions in such hazardous industries result in increased risks a risk and these increased risks may result in terrible tragedy even in disasters whose consequences exceed national boundaries although it is certainly true that a nuclear power station working safely without accident is ecologically one of the cleanest of all industrial plants. As you can see there are a lot of different ideas, a lot of separate clauses which are complete and they have been string, strung together. The improved version would be we must accept the facts and our enormous energy requirements but it is also important not to forget that attempts to economize on safe, uh, safety provisions in such hazardous, hazardous industries result in increased risk, full stop. And these increased risks may result in terrible tragedy even in disasters whose consequences exceed national boundaries, full stop. It is certainly true, however, that a nuclear power station working safely without accident is ecologically one of the cleanest of all industrial plants. The same uh, message but said in three sentences rather than one long stringy sentence. Now coming to something uh, different 
up till now we had been talking about how sentences were either stringy or uh, fused or put together with the comma splice and how that created problems. Let us have a look at agreement. Agreement between subjects and verbs and between pronouns and their antecedents is important for paragraph coherence as well as for style and grammar. When editing your document, check for agreement, paying close attention to subjects, verbs and pronouns. You have to see that your subjects, verbs and pronouns are agree with each other or not. It is not that your noun is something else and your pronoun is something else. इंडिकेट कर रहा है या जो आपके प्रोनाउन का एंटीसीडेंट है जिस चीज के बारे में वो प्रोनाउन मेंशन कर रहा है वो ही क्लियर ना हो लेट्स हैव अ लुक एट सम एग्जांपल्स एंड द कांसेप्ट विल बिकम क्लियरर फॉर यू बट फर्स्ट लेट्स सी व्हाट यू नीड टू डू टू मेक श्योर दैट योर सेंटेंस हैज एग्रीमेंट यू नीड टू मेक श्योर दैट योर सब्जेक्ट एग्रीज विद योर वर्ब इसको हम सब्जेक्ट वर्ब एग्रीमेंट कहते हैं यू आल्सो नीड टू मेक श्योर दैट योर प्रोनाउंस agree in gender and number with their antecedents what yani jo bhi aap pronouns istemal kar rahe hain aur jis cheez ke liye aap pronouns istemal kar rahe hain aap wohi gender istemal kare agar aap kisi female cheez ke liye baat kar rahe hain to phir pronoun bhi feminine ho male ke liye masculine ho cheez aapka noun masculine hai to uska pronoun bhi masculine ho jo antecedents hain wo gender mein apne pronoun ke sath match kare and also in number if you are talking of uh, if your antecedent is plural then your pronoun has to be plural as well you also need to make sure that the form of your pronoun is appropriate for how you are using the pronoun in the sentence the pronoun case and for the sake of clarity make sure that your pronouns are closely linked to their antecedent we call this pronoun reference जो प्रोनाउंस के एंटीसीडेंट हैं, उनके करीब में ही प्रोनाउंस लिखे हुए हों ताकि ये अंदाजा रहे कि किस चीज के बारे में बात हो रही है। Your verb must agree with your subject in number and person. If your subject is singular, your verb must be singular. If your subject is plural, your verb must be plural. If your subject is in the first person, your verb must be in the first first person. If your subject is in the second person or third person, your verb must agree. For example, for more than a century, researchers has known that exposure to high pressure can injure or kill living organisms. Now here, researchers and has do not agree. The acceptable form would be, for more than a century, researchers have known that exposure to high pressure can injure or kill. Uh, in general, you can think of subject-verb agreement as requiring one S per clause. हर क्लॉज के लिए एक एस आपने अपने वर्ब के साथ लगाना है आइदर या अपने सब्जेक्ट के साथ लगाना है सो इधर ऑन द वर्ब और ऑन द सब्जेक्ट बट नेवर ऑन बोथ दोनों के साथ एस नहीं आएगा या सब्जेक्ट के साथ एस आएगा या वर्ब के साथ एस आएगा ऑफ कोर्स दिस रूल अप्लाइज ओनली विद प्रेजेंट टेंस वर्ब एंड नाउन्स एंड दोज दैट डू नॉट हैव इरेगुलर प्लूरल फॉर्म्स जो इरेगुलर प्लूरल फॉर्म्स हैं वो तो अलग हैं do not be led astray by modifying phrases that separate the subject and the verb. If you are not sure about the subject verb agreement, test the sentence by leaving out the modifiers. बहुत से हमने पहले modifiers की बात की थी, देखे थे, तो आप अपने आप ये confuse मत हों कि आपने ऐसे ना हो कि आप इतने confuse हो जाएं कि आप modifier के साथ s लगा रहे हैं या आप अपने noun या verb के साथ s लगा रहे हैं। अगर आप श्योर नहीं हैं तो आप मॉडिफायर हटा के सेंटेंस पढ़ के देखिए कि वो ठीक लगता है या नहीं लगता। An unacceptable example would be a mixture of materials were used to withstand high temperatures. The subject here is mixture, not materials, so the verb should agree. It would be acceptable to say a mixture of materials was used to withstand high temperatures. Also, when you're using two or more nouns. If your subject contains two or more nouns, you need to pay special attention to subject-verb agreement. If the nouns are connected by the coordinating conjunction and, use a plural verb. Although accidents and conjunction, uh, congestion results from driving, etc. Iske bajai aap kehenge, although accidents and conge uh, congestion result from driving. 
also uh, instead of saying your advisor or your course instructor are required to sign the form, you will say your advisor or your course instructor is required to sign the form. Unacceptable form would be both your advisor and your course instructor is required to sign the form. You get and hai, to aap plural karenge. You will say both your advisor and your course instructor are required to sign the form. Similarly, if you are saying either your course instructor or three fellow students who know your ability is required to sign the form, to ye galat hai. The better form would be either your course instructor or three fellow students who know your ability are required to sign the form. Because you are three fellow students, ki baat kar rahe hai, baad mein, to jo, ba, jo aapka verb hoga, wo plural hoga. Isi tarah, agar aap baad mein singular uh, aapka subject hai, to phir aapka plural, uh, jo aapka verb hai, wo bhi singular hoga. Instead of saying either three fellow students who know your ability or your course instructor are required to sign the form, आप कोर्स इंस्ट्रक्टर के साथ अपने वर्ब को अग्री करेंगे यू विल से आइदर थ्री फेलो स्टूडेंट्स हु नो योर एबिलिटी और योर कोर्स इंस्ट्रक्टर इज रिक्वायर्ड टू साइन द फॉर्म जो भी बाद में आपका सब्जेक्ट होगा आपका वर्ब उसके साथ अग्री करेगा इन दिस लेक्चर वी लुक्ड एट कॉमनली फाउंड लैंग्वेज प्रॉब्लम्स इन सेंटेंसेज वी लुक्ड एट स्टैक मॉडिफायर्स एंड नाउन्स वर्डनेस ओवरलोडेड सेंटेंसेज सेंटेंस फ्रैगमेंट्स Comma splice, few sentences, stringy sentences, and we looked at agreement. And in the next lecture, we will continue reviewing language and we will continue looking at sentences. Until then, Allah Hafiz.